Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Well, good morning. This is going to be a real interesting episode because we're in a place in Thailand called Bamboo School. And there are approximately 50 kids around here. Some of them are up at the lake, so they're not all in this one spot. They have two campuses. Um, You're going to hear kids yelling and screaming and all kinds of things behind me, but I can't tell them to be quiet. So I'm just going to go forward with this. You're also going to hear some thunder and rain. It just started a thunderstorm here, and so we'll just keep on uh, pressing on. I want to—I have do have some thoughts that I want to bring to you. And one of the things I'm also going to do is to—I'm um, going instead of doing the harp music, I'm going to play some of the music of the kids singing. Uh, they sing in the Karen language. Uh, the Karen tribe, we are just probably, Momo is the woman who operates this, she started it 23 years ago, came here, I'll just say a brief message about her, she uh, came here, was told she was going, she had cancer and she was going to die in four months, and so she came up here to die, and God gave her a vision to take care of children, and that's what she's been doing ever since, 23 years later, and uh, we first came here in 2006, and or 2005 surely corrects me and um, we uh, saw immediately that there were ways that we could help them and so we this is our eighth time that we have come here Um, this the second time we came we brought all the supplies and everything well the money to buy the supplies to put in a water system because before that they were going down to the creek with garbage cans on bamboo poles uh, between two boys putting water in from the creek and then carrying it back up about a quarter mile up the hill again. And we said, I think we can make something better than that work. So so we did that. And uh, so we've been supporting this um, orphanage ever since. Not all the kids here are true orphans. Many are. Some of are here so that because their parents live way out in the outlying areas and they don't have any schools there and so they come here to be able to go to school. Um, Others are older girls that Momo keeps here so that they will not be sold into especially the Bangkok uh, sex slave market and um, that's just a reality here. We found out quite a few years back by another person who had done a lot of research that this is the number one uh, sex 
sex vacation capital of the world. Um, and that was actually being underlined to us by the taxi driver we had bringing us from the airport here. He was g d giving us different little um, pieces of bait to see if we were interested in uh, alternative lifestyles that he would be glad to introduce us to. So um, we realized that that is still a very much a reality here in Thailand. Um, the Thai people are the, some of the most friendly people you will ever meet. And um, as somebody said, uh, it's miles and miles of smiles here, and that's so true. Um, they're always greeted with great, um, great enthusiasm and welcome here. Uh, we just had a great service today out at the lake. Um, I preached the sermon on Choose You This Day, and um, it was well received. Played the harp, and... Um, I'll probably have a little video I might share later on of, of some of the harp music that we did here. Um, anyway, just wanted to highlight um, Bamboo School here because it's a, a place that is uh, meeting the needs of many, many people. Uh, a group came up from Bangkok while we were up at the lake today bringing um, bags and bags and bags of rice and toys for the kids and treats and all kinds of things. And one of the first things Momo did was to separate out over half of the food to be given away to the village around here and some of the some of the uh, refugees that are coming out of Burma that are up in the up in the uh, forest here just a few hundred yards behind us. Actually, the Burma line, uh, actually called Myanmar today, uh, is is just a few hundred thousand, a few hundred, a few thousand miles yards behind us and uh, you don't have to walk very far and you will be in Myanmar and many of the Karen people are being very s sadly persecuted here by the military in Myanmar because they do not like the Karen people the Karen helped the British during World War II and when the British made the treaty they forgot to, s to mention or they left out maybe a better word to you to say it um, left out the Karen tribe and so the the military have been very hard on trying to eliminate uh, basically genocide if, um, and so most of the children that are here in bamboo school are Karen tribe and um, one of the most interesting things to me is that they their traditional Karen dress is very close to what we see in in the scripture and they one of the things they do is they tie tassels on the corners of their garments which is just absolutely amazing to me when you read about the tzitzit in in the uh, old testament and then they uh, have always traditionally believed in only one god uh, they're not like buddha around them they don't accept buddha um, and so it's very interesting to see how these people are and how they live and how they've been persecuted which is another cue that they might be some of the lost tribe of Israel because Israel has always been persecuted no matter where they went. So, you know, back in Genesis 3.15, God said, I will put enmity between you and the women. That's you is the enemy, Satan, the snake, and the women, the women which we see in Revelation 12 as even being the, uh, the um, woman with the 12 stars and the mother of the, of the 12 tribes. Which, remember, Paul said we're all grafted in, so it's not a matter of being exclusive. It's those who are choosing to follow God's word and his way. That's really what that represents. It's not a matter of whether you're a blood Israel or not. It's a matter of whether you are grafted in to Yeshua, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will have much fruit. And so that's what we're talking about, that, that family of people who have accepted Yeshua as their savior so i don't want to get too theological here but at the same time um i do just want you to just wanted to share some ideas about the karen people and i want to share some of the music so um i'm going to cut quit talking here for a little bit and i'm going to play some of their music of the kids singing and then we'll come back for some more comments
So that's the Karen children singing a couple of songs you might have recognized by the tune. Anyway, uh, I'm always my heart is always warmed when I hear them, and it's fun to watch them. They just throw their heads back and throw their whole heart and soul into this music. Um, I'm sorry it was not the be best recording. We were in a big room, uh, and it was a bit hard to get the uh, acoustics. But anyway, I think you at least get the idea. So I wanted to, um, for my psalm for today, it, during this worship in the morning we've had, and even evening both actually, it seems that the topic of hearing or the ear or eyes and ears or all of the above has come up 
almost every one of our worship services. And so I was thinking, in fact, yesterday morning I pitched in a little bit and I said, you know, we're talking about us having ears to hear our Heavenly Father. But do you realize that we're depending on Him to hear us? And so that's kind of where I wanted to go with the psalm for today. This is Psalm 4. And this is written by David to the choir master with stringed instruments. So that would be right down my alley with the harp and right down David's alley. And uh, so apparently he wrote this especially for the harp and other stringed instruments. I'm sure there were some other ones being developed as well. It said David invented instruments in the Chronicles. So anyway, he says, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. So David right off the bat is depending on our Heavenly Father to hear when he calls to him. And he said, goes on to say, you have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. So here we go again. Hear my prayer. David is depending that God will be gracious to us. He will hear our prayer. That's why we pray, because we're depending on him to hear. We're not just making sound. We're presenting our case before our Heavenly Father for him to notice and to intervene in. So, so David is writing in that manner. He's expecting God to hear. And as the Hebrew for hear is... It means to hear and go out to perform what we heard, to obey in our case, but to God to be gracious for uh, towards us. O oh men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah. Remember that word selah means stop and think about that. But know that Yahweh, our Lord, has set apart the godly for himself and he hears when I call to him so David once again is reminding us that it's not vain words that we're putting out there but our Heavenly Father hears and because he hears he's going to do something so that is great promise for us great encouragement for us and then he goes on to say be angry and do not sin so it's okay to be angry, but don't sin being angry. Ponder in your heart, in your own hearts, on your beds, and be silent. Think about it. Once again, Selah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in Yahweh. Now, remember, sacrifices are, today don't represent animals. Today, remember, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of ram. So once again, we've got this listening in there. Um, and I've quoted from Psalm 51 for that, p p th that little portion there of to obey is better than sacrifice. Verse 6, there are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Yahweh. That kind of reminds us of the Aaronic blessing out of Numbers chapter 6. Lift up your countenance upon us and give us your shalom. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. So the joy of our Heavenly Father is better than having our stomachs full and being happy with wine. In shalom I will both lie down and sleep for you alone, O Yahweh, my Lord, make me dwell in safety. So that's Psalm 4, and I think that's a really important psalm for us to remember as we contemplate appealing to our Heavenly Father and expecting Him to hear us and to respond to our needs appropriately. Now, sometimes it's not exactly what we wanted or asked for, but it is always for what's the best. And that's one of the things that Shirley and I talk about a lot is learning the difference between our not wants and needs and desires because a lot of times our Heavenly Father takes care of our needs but he says about our wants I think you want to wait about that one a little bit and many times he has made sure that we waited on that one but it's never waiting for the bad it's waiting because it's 
something that we need to understand, something we need to learn, something we need to see. Those are the things that he causes us to wait upon. But in the end of the day, he is the one who has brought everything that we need. And we're reminded of that. And if you hear the little crying in the background, that is baby John. Every pop calls him baby John, but he's actually, what is he, 17 years old? He's closer to 20. Closer to 20. He has, he's totally blind. He is uh, cerebral palsy. He is, um, cannot hear. So he lives in darkness his whole life. And he's a baby that would have been thrown away by so many people, but Momo Cat took him in. And um, he was here the first time we were here. And he was pretty much the same. Every day is darkness to him. The only kind of input he gets is some kind of vibration uh, when, uh, when the children are running around or when it starts. I, I noticed when it starts to rain really hard, he gets really excited. I think he f feels the energy of the rain coming down. But, but Momo said, we don't throw children away. And so baby John has been here and he's quite, he's an amazing testimony to me of, of the long suffering. Our Heavenly Father is like that towards us. We may have not one thing we can offer him, but he takes care of us. He loves us, he created us, and he has our best in mind. And so I always, many times I think about baby John, he's not a baby anymore. But that seems to be the name they've given him, and that's stuck. So, um, and everybody, he has to be fed. He can walk a little bit. He has to be bathed. He, has, he, is, he still has to wear a diaper. There's all of these things that, for his care. And sometimes he starts to cry like that because... He's hungry. The, he, I think right now he's hungry, yeah. And uh, he's supposed to be getting some dinner here pretty soon. But back to our Heavenly Father and the, the way he takes care of our needs. What I... What I have noticed the most about being here at Bamboo School, and every time we've come, this is the eighth time we have come here, is that um, our Heavenly Father has found so many ways of taking care of the needs of the children here. Things show up that were never expected, and sometimes something shows up and Kat goes, what in the world is this all about? Like one time she got a package of shoelaces, and she goes, what am I going to do with shoelaces? I don't have any need for that. Everybody wears sandals here anyway. But about a couple of weeks later, a container came in full of shoes, but they didn't have any laces. <laughs> and she was able to give those out to a lot of the refugees who um, need some kind of protection for their feet in walking through the forest because there's many sharp things to, you can be cut on. And so many times um, finances show up in her account that she doesn't know where they've come from. And it's usually at a time when she's called upon to to make some expenditure she wasn't expecting to in she said one time she said sometimes when something shows up extra i'm wondering okay father what's next something must be coming up because you're already providing for it and we're reminded so often that before he, we call he will answer and while we are yet speaking he will he will hear us in our case in point we just coming this time to come a, uh, not more than two months ago and uh, everything was running fine. Well, the, the day after we got here, Momo hurt her foot really bad, and she can't even drive. And uh, the doctor told her to stay off of it for a, her foot off of it for a week. And um, lo and behold, guess who's the driver? <laughs> That's me. I'm taking the kids to school, picking them up. We're going, taking people to the hospital. Shirley even um, was accompanying uh, one of the stroke victims that was down in the village that since Momo couldn't drive and couldn't wa ride in the ambulance, Shirley rode in the ambulance and cared for the patient and prayed for the patient. She, we didn't know if the patient was going to live or die because it was a very serious stroke. And Kuala was driving the, the van and Shirley was in the back with the patient praying. And they got her to the hospital and she actually opened her eyes and was doing better. And so even then, Shirley's nursing with prayer was an amazing help to this lady. And so even not planning to be here at this time, two months ago our Heavenly Father knew that Kat was going to need somebody to drive and to take some of the medical runs since she wouldn't be able to. And then yesterday um, one of the older 
young men, um, Deck came. And he's going to be here for almost two months. So as I leave as the driver, Deck can drive. And he's a very good driver. And actually, he's going to drive us down to Bangkok Monday so that we can catch our airplane. And so time and time again, this is a place where the, where the, long, where the care of our Heavenly Father is displayed on a daily basis and it's almost like you don't even you can't even begin to worry about anything anymore because you just have this assurance that our Heavenly Father is going to take care of things and so with those thoughts I'm going to leave you um, there's a, so much more I could say but I just want to say be blessed in your week and remember your Heavenly Father has not forgotten you and he will take care of you So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say. A little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.